I'm back with uh, Ewan again from uh, Microbee. Uh, thanks for uh, showing us around the uh, the Microbee, Ewan. You're um, we're going to show you a little bit about the machine now, how it works. Uh, we've got one set up here for you. Um, so Ewan, just give us a bit of a run through of what this thing can do. Okay, sure. This is the Premium Plus. It's got the SD card built into it for the storage. Um, so normally with the old, older Microbees, uh, it has floppy drives attached. Mm and so on so the, this one the sd card takes place of the floppy drives uh, it's got logical floppy drives stored uh, is disk images on the sd card so that's already loaded in the back here so all we've got to do is basically power it up and it'll boot straight from the sd card just like it was booting from a floppy drive right. so we can do that now okay does it boot quicker or is it is it the same speed as it would have um, worked on the floppy? It is a little bit quicker, yeah. but because of the emulation um, and the way the disk controller worked, there were certain signals that you couldn't make any faster. Right. Um, yeah. Because this model actually has a floppy disk controller option so that you could so actually to... hang floppy drives off it as well. So the hardware's so, got to work with both so yes. timing and things like that. Yes, right. so okay. that's fully booted now. Um, that's uh, Microbee's graphic shell uh, front okay. end to CPM, uh, so CPM 2.2 for ZA based machines, uh, full standard uh, CPM implement implementation, and uh, yeah, there's the file system right there. Of, uh, but, but this is something specific to, to the Microbee, so this interface. Um, yes, it is. is yeah, it is was written uh, by Microbee for the Microbee computer right. range. Um, it allowed uh, single key access to word processors, spreadsheets. Uh, we had video text uh, via tel, uh, implementation. So if you had a modem connected and you wanted to look up some pages back in the 80s, of course, with uh, via tel video text for mm -hmm. um, maybe booking airline tickets or, yeah. or that sort of thing, yep. you could do that. Um, there was a user function you could predefine uh, through the system. There's an initialization and configuration utility, you could predefine some commands that uh, you could pop into there. And it is the initialization program. So uh, floppy disk formatting and stuff, right, okay. All yeah. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, screen configuration, you could actually move the image on the screen yeah. to suit your monitor as well, uh, rather than uh, fiddling with the monitor's controls. Okay. You, you could center it into where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, the colors, because uh, this machine's got color as well. Um, we've got it hooked up at the moment just with monochrome video yeah. on a standard TV. Yeah. But, um, to be fair, so what we've got at the minute, just to explain to people, is we've got a, uh, an LCD screen on this um, and it's uh, basically mono. Um, that's for you guys, so you can see if we have a, a, an LC, a, a CRT screen, the picture rolls, it's all a little bit iffy, so we've got it on LCD screen here, but, but this machine is actually color. Yes, yep. yes it is. It's got an RGP port out the back here. Mm -hmm. um, the video that comes out, the standard power cable here, it's got a number of signals. There's uh, the cassette signals, the video out and power in. Right. But the, the video that comes out of here is monochrome. Right. Okay. Um, because so, most of the time this would have been connected up to a standard monochrome. Yeah, or a um, green screen or yeah. an amber screen monitor, that yeah. sort of thing. They so were the, the cheap the options. Yep. And um, those that really wanted their colour screens, you know, forked out a lot of money for them. And, and Yeah, colour monitors at that time were big money. Yes, um, they were. So, yeah, I mean, certainly I had, well, I had my first computer connected up to a telly. Mm. Um, so no monitor at all. And with, the, with the, the crawl across the screen that probably sent my eyes, probably why I need glasses now. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so it's, it's worth pointing out to people that, that your monitor was probably half the cost of machine again. Yes, they, yes, they it were was. pricey items. Yeah. Okay. So, um, going through the thing here, still we've got uh, you just pressed a single key, one of the number keys to mm -hmm. get these to function. There's the transfer program, which allowed you to copy programs to different disks and you know um, all that sort of thing. Um, erase some files. You got help there, and that. Uh, so this interface made it very simple to get yeah. going with. Um, basically a CPM operating system. You, know, you didn't have to learn the commands, you could just go into you know, basic or single key functions, mm -hmm. uh, learn the programs that helped you copy programs back and forth between disks, erase files, all that sort of thing, and, and help was there as well. Um, and you also had a backup program there so that you, if you had a working disk that you're working on, you wanted to make a, a backup copy of it, you just put disks in and uh, Press the go button and it'll copy one from the other. Right, that's a really nice sort of shell around um, 
around the operating system because uh, yeah because if you go straight into cpn at the time you'd end up with the a and the prompt and and that's it yes now yeah. what you have to know the commands you've actually to... got to pick up a manual and read something that's yes we can't don't have that don't, don't want to do no. that no right okay <laughs> now that's cool very nice very nice um and we, we've got some icons up here. This operating system, if you actually plug a mouse onto it as well, it had a serial mouse connection that you could plug on the back there. Mm -hmm. uh, you could actually uh, trigger some of the commands and so on by using the mouse, which uh, in 1986, when these came out, that was um, That's pretty good. Advanced. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, so we should point out that this is not something that you've created because obviously this is the uh, Microbe Plus, so it's it, you know, the modern version. Yes. Um, but this isn't. Knew this was back in the day. Yes, the that's that all the had. original software um, that ran on those machines back in 1980s mm -hmm. um, with some extra functions hardware wise to make it easier to use mm. these days. Uh, no one, you know, very rarely can you get floppy drives mm. uh, or floppy disks and that sort of thing. So the SD card was essential for that. Mm. Um, and uh, a few other niceties in there like extra memory and, and so on. Right. Cool. So, what else we got? The, the, can do so you've got an SD card um, you got lots of software on there as well yes yes you can uh, go into a menu and choose which uh, disk images you can boot off or uh, you can have up to four floppy disks logical floppy disks mm -hmm. enabled at the time right. so you can have uh, you know various games disks or, or, or whatever and you can choose which one to boot off as well so that uh, if you've got a lot of the microbe disks when they were distributed were auto boot so if you had a games disk with a number of games on them mm -hmm. you put them in the drive and boot up to a menu that allowed you to select which game oh, so right. um, you had to put those in the boot drive obviously mm -hmm. um, and, and just uh, turn it on and away you go. Yep. Yeah. Can we see that? Is it? We've got an image on there that can do that. Uh, yes, we can do that. I'll just have to. Uh, this one's got a boot manager in it because of the um, the SD card. Now I can just go in and uh, these are the, the files that have been allocated to the various virtual floppy drives. Right. Um, so we can just uh, choose uh, the drive image. So allocate, and we want to choose drive A for the boot drive, and We'll go and select the arcade disk. Right. And this will accept um, raw disk images or uh, DSK format uh, CPC uh, uh, disk images as well. So uh, that's now allocated into right. A drive. Into A drive. Yeah. So we can uh, escape, save that, and it will automatically boot into nice. the arcade games. Right. Fantastic. So, what's the what's the good game on there? Uh, well, my favourite scrambler. That's one right. one that I actually bought for myself back in the day. So, right. uh, we can go into that, and uh, you can see it loads very quickly. Yeah. Um, that's a lot faster than it would if it was off a normal floppy disk. That, um, scrambler. Yeah. So that that kind of sounds familiar. Uh, you. <laughs> Oops. Oh. I can't remember how to play it now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. that sort of graphics available. So, right. yep. Brilliant. So it gives you an idea of what the machine was capable of. Yes. So, great stuff. All right. So, thank you very much for that. Um, that's uh, it's interesting stuff. The front end over the, over uh, CPM is quite quite interesting. I haven't seen that before. So, yes. um, yeah. Well, thank well, you very much for for showing us around. Thank you. Cheers.